Hey everyone, this is Theo from Headphones.com, and today I'm going to be taking a look at the new items from Empire Ears. These are Mark II versions, so they're follow-ups to the Valkyrie, the Bravado, and then the ESR. I'll be showing off some of the accessories, and then I'll get into some listening impressions as well. Let's get right into it. So over here you have the box that all the Empire Ears items come in. It's a very tastefully done box, and I really think they've knocked it out of the park with the presentation here. So if we unfold the flap, you can see that there is some documentation inside. And then the IMs are inside here as well, but I've removed them already, so you're not gonna see them there. And then you can see that the bottom slides out like a tray. And over here would be the case, which I've also removed. And then over here, you have your final E ear tips. Generally, I don't talk about ear tips, but fun little fact, the final E ear tips, what they will generally do is they pull down the treble in the upper mid range. And then at the same time, they're going to make the bass sound a little bit tighter in the transients generally, or at least that's been my experience thus far. Something that I really like about the Empire Ears items is this Pandora case. It is machined out of aluminum and it is a hockey puck style case where this will sort of unseal. This thing is just super duper beefy. Like you could probably run it over with a car and I think it would be fine. Something that I really wanna highlight though is this inside coating made out of rubber. If you take a look at a lot of other hockey puck style cases, you will generally see that they are coated with felt or some other fabric. And realistically, that's just not a very good design choice because if you're not cleaning your items every time you put them in, it's gonna get really gunky. So this is just a very thoughtful decision on Empire Ears end. Okay, so moving on to the items themselves, over here you have the Bravado Mark II. And honestly, this is probably the least visually appealing of these items to me. Obviously aesthetics are 100% subjective, but I do find that this look is a little bit tacky and I probably would not find myself wearing these outside personally. Moving on to the ESR Mark II though, I really like the look of this one. It is super duper clean. And you can just sort of see how the sort of Empire Ears logo floats and the shadow underneath. That is just super duper sweet. Um, I could definitely see myself wearing these items. And over here you have the Valkyrie. The Valkyrie definitely has the most stunning faceplate and I believe it is called their Dragon Hide faceplate. This is a really cool faceplate and it will shift visually under the light depending on the conditions. Okay, so now I'm gonna be doing some quick listening impressions off of my trusty DX160. I will say the name of the track and throw up an image on screen so that you guys can follow along as well. The first track that I'm going to be listening to is Everglow's Dun Dun. This is pretty much my go-to track for testing bass slam nowadays, and it's just a very intensive track that I really enjoy listening to, especially on bass heavy stuff. So let's do this with the Valkyrie first. Okay, and here you can see how they fit in my ears. I think it fits pretty well, maybe not as tightly as the original Valkyrie, but just in general, pretty easy to get into my ears. And let's move on to this track here. Something that I always make sure to do is turn down the volume before I listen to a new IM, just because you don't necessarily know how loud it's going to be right at the beginning. Okay, we can turn this one up. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, wow. Yeah, this thing slams hard. <laughs> yeah, so this thing is a massively V-shaped IM. It has tons and tons of bass, lots of crazy sub bass, and quite a bit of mid bass too. Um, it's definitely not the cleanest, but on the slap factor scale, I think this is like a solid 7 or 8 out of 10. It's really high up there for slap. Holy cow. Okay. Um, let's try out the uh, Bravado next. That's a fun ride. Um, and I'll use the same track for the Bravado as well so that we're maintaining consistency between these IMs when testing. And if you guys are wondering about the cables that are being used on these IMs, these are the effect audio cables, which Empire Ears have branded with their own logo, I believe. Hmm. Okay. Okay, so I think the Bravado, it has more bass than the Valkyrie Mark II, just a tad bit more, but at the same time, it does feel a little bit more uncontrolled. I don't know if it has that same sort of tasteful tactility to it that I just heard on the Valkyrie. The mid-range of the Bravado as well, it doesn't seem to have that sort of tasteful upper mid-range tilt to it that the Valkyrie had, so it does sound quite a bit darker to my ears in this test track at least. Um, slap factor, eh, maybe a solid five or six. It's not bad, but at the same time, I don't think it's giving me that same sort of special sauce that the Valkyrie just did. Okay, on to the ESR Mark II, and yep, same shell, I think. Or is it the same shell? You know what, I think the, yeah, I think this is actually a slightly thinner shell than the uh, Bravado Mark II in the Valkyrie, so that's interesting. Yeah, it does seem like the ESR Mark II contours to the side of my ear a little bit better. Um, not that the Bravado or the Valkyrie were bad by any means in that respect. So, if I recall correctly, this one is using a balanced armature for the base, or balanced armatures, plural, for the base. 
and that would make sense given that this one doesn't seem to have as much slam. It has a little bit more of that farty quality that balanced armatures tend to have, but at the same time I don't think that this has been poorly done necessarily. It's a tasteful base boost and it is a whole lot more balanced than the uh, Bravado or the Valkyrie in this respect. Alright, so the next test track that I'm going to be using is Joe Nichols' Sunny in 75. So yeah, this is actually one of my favorite country tracks. I actually listen to quite a bit of country music despite my otherwise pretty weeby music library. This is a male vocal centric track and Joe Nichols himself has a more, I, want to, I don't want to say gruff, but he tends to have a thicker vocal timbre, which will sort of put, I believe, the Valkyrie to the test in particular, um, considering it has more of a V-shaped tuning from what I can tell. So yeah, let's get right to it. Um, nope, that's the ESR Mark II. Or is the Valkyrie. Something that you might notice about all of the Empire Ears items, at least the ones that use a dynamic driver, is that they have a sort of crinkling sound when you put them in. This is called driver flex, and it's a harmless crinkling of the driver. It doesn't do anything negative, although it can be a little bit disconcerting to hear, I guess. Okay, let's plug this back in. And where is it? All right. Hitting play now. Okay, yeah, I do think the bass is a little bit overbearing on those opening drum notes in the backdrop. Not bad. Okay, so the clarity here is good, but the vocals themselves, they sound a little bit thinner and maybe more recessed in terms of presentation. This is a fairly bright IM. I hear a little bit of energy around 5k hertz, so... Yeah, overall not bad. It does sort of suffer from the sort of v-shape in the mid-range but at the same time i do like the treble energy on this and it sort of plays into the i guess um sort of energy of the track itself so let's move on to the bravado mark ii now yeah i don't know if i'm a fan of this his voice sounds like downwards compressed on the stage almost a little bit too thick in this aspect i think almost it sounds like the treble and the energy that the Valkyrie had is just nowhere to be found in the bravado when I'm here listening right now. I'm going to be completely honest with you guys, this probably is not going to see a full review just because I can already tell that I don't like it very much. It really just sounds like bass and not much else. Like, on this track just now, his voice is just so thick and there's no treble at all to sort of offset the gargantuan amounts of bass on this IM. Now, that's kind of a bummer, but at the same time, maybe it should have been sort of expected given that it's their sort of entry level model. Although I would have liked to have seen better for 800 bucks. But yeah, let's give the ESR Mark II a shot now. Okay, yeah, so the balance here is a lot more desirable. The mids are back. It reminds me a lot of the Andromeda, actually, if the uh, if the peanut compensation was brought up. So vocals are very upfront on this IM. So there does appear to be a sort of lack of air in general to this, but at the same time, I think the tonal balance here is probably the most balanced out of the three of these IMs. Yeah, this is good. I think it flies really well with this. Um, this would probably be the most balanced Empire Ears IM that I've heard actually outside of the Odin, which they recently released. But yeah, I think that's going to do it for these first impressions. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you guys want a little Twitter review summary of the impressions, I guess, I would say the Valkyrie's a yay, the Bravado Mark II is a nay, and the ESR Mark II is a yay as well. Um, two very solid IMs out of three is not a bad thing at all, and I really do think that I am going to be reviewing the Valkyrie in particular. That thing slaps, and I can't wait to get my thoughts down on it in full. Um, but yeah, I think that's going to do it for this video, and I'll see you guys in the full review.